Good afternoon once again, <clears throat> class. <clears throat> Today we're going to continue our discussion on portfolio risk and return and portfolio optimization. So far, what we have done was to learn how to download. I uh, will download the the, uh, the DAX index, forty stocks all in all. <clears throat> we even we created an environment for that. Okay. We will leave this now. In the meantime, and. Uh, uh, last time we said that we learned how to compute for a portfolio risk and portfolio return. Okay, this is the formula to compute for the portfolio return. And this is the formula to compute for this one, the portfolio risk. Okay, so that's double summation, W sub I, W sub J, sigma sub IJ. Okay, okay let me... Let me remove the text here to make it uh, <clears throat> there. Okay, W sub I, W sub J, J, sigma sub I, J. So in the next, uh, today we're going to uh, continue our discussion on this, but this time let's apply this to a group of stocks, not this one, because I'm going to use this, uh, this uh, data set <clears throat> for your activities for your group exercise. So may I invite you to open a, a new RMG file. Uh, make sure that it's under your portfolio optimization project. So let me open new RMG file. <clears throat> okay, MM Mamiani attendance. Okay, so I'm opening a <clears throat> new RMG file. <clears throat> Okay, let me close this. All right, so we're going to learn how to compute for a daily returns, daily discrete returns, or daily simple returns, and daily uh, log returns or continuous returns. I don't think we have uh, discussed that before. So we'll do that now. And then uh, may I ask you, class, if... Uh, so for Friday, next, this coming Friday, we're going to, I hope we're going to finish everything. Uh, and uh, please, before I forget, uh, make sure that you look at the performance, at, at the portfolio analytics package, because that, that's what we're going to use uh, next, this Friday. So make sure that you, you research about it. What does it do? What are the, uh, what are the functionalities of Portfolio analytics. In the meantime, let's uh, first um, let's use the Pacman package to load. Okay, let's load Pacman and p load the packages that we're going to use. Let's use Tidyverse. Okay, and then performance analytics. This is of course quant mode, and let's let's see. Let's use portfolio analytics also, but we're not going to use that now. We're going to use that next meeting. Portfolio analytics, but let's just load that. Okay, and maybe I don't know. Duplicate. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So let's load this. Let's load these packages. Let's run this. Let me just delete everything. Let me start from scratch. Okay, has it run already? Maybe not. Okay, there. <clears throat> okay, good. Uh, once you're ready, class, kindly uh, kindly chat, please, if you're done, if you're ready. Attendance, kindly remind me later at the end of the class. <clears throat> Are you all set, class? Have you loaded, I'm sure, Tidyverse, Performance Analytics, Quant Mode, we have done that before, Luby Day. Or portfolio Analytics, um, maybe not yet. I, I'm not sure if we already downloaded that. And when you're run and you're ready, kindly <clears throat> kindly chat, please. Okay. 
Okay, good. Thank you. All right. So just like before, let's create an object called tickers, which will be the uh, holder of our stocks. So let's uh, let's choose ten stocks. Microsoft. Um, let's just make it the same as what we chose in the other section. Apple. I hope I can remember. Tesla. Then Netflix. Let's choose uh, Google. We also did Facebook Meta. Then we had uh, we did JP Morgan. JP Morgan. I think we also did McDonald's. How many are these? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two more. Uh, Goldman Sachs, I think, yeah. Goldman Sachs, GS, uh, and then I think Toyota, yeah. PM. All right. We have 10 stocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. And then we also, let's uh, define our start date. Start, and let's make it, uh, let's convert it into a date, 2016, 2016, dash 0101, okay. And then also let's define our end date. Uh, as that date, let's make it, let's make it 2022, dash 12, dash 31, end of 2022. All right. So these are our uh, these are our objects, stickers, start and end. Let's run this. <clears throat> okay, so we have this. Okay, and then let's now <clears throat> we're going to download now. We're going to download this stock prices. Okay. So let's get let's put some get get daily stock prices from Yahoo using quant mode. Okay. So let's first, uh, just like what we did before, let's create an object called portfolio. Uh, uh, maybe let's call it uh, Stock prices. Okay, let's call it stock. And then, okay, let's go, just call it port, portfolio prices. Anyway, it's just a name. Portfolio prices, and then let's start with it being null. So it's an empty container. It's an it's empty. So this container is, is empty, and then we're going to create uh, a function for. Let's uh, call it ticker in tickers, so, so we're creating this object ticker and then it will link tickers, right? Then you, we uh, create, we populate this uh, object portfolio prices, okay? Portfolio prices, then we, we bind, we call them bind, we see bind, uh, C bind into the portfolio prices. Maxi, mute muna kita. Okay, portfolio prices. Then, right, what do you do with this? We use the get symbols function. get symbols okay, we can use already get symbols that yahoo so to, to be direct direct already get symbols that yahoo okay. 
we get symbols that show uh, and then uh, it will we start with ticker here ticker will link to our ticker C for ticker in tickers then uh, let's define our from is equal to the start date then two is equal to the end date comma uh, and then we what else the periodicity let's define the periodicity is equal to daily okay and that auto that assign is equal to okay if there are uh, a while ago, we were we used as auto that assign is equal to okay false, but we were having some problems. But let's see, okay. So we C bind here. Uh, the get symbols closes here, and then what we do is C bind. We include. We will subset plus. We will only get the adjusted price comma six there and then we close the c binding okay so let's take a look at this uh, port we're creating this subject portfolio prices it starts with null nothing inside and then we said that uh, uh, we're going to loop it Ticker, ticker in tickers in this one. Okay, so we create this object portfolio prices where it will now put into this object, it will now column bind, put it in columns, get symbols from Yahoo, the ticker, it will do this one at a time, it will, it will loop starting from the start date up to the end date, daily prices, okay, and then auto that assign is equal to false, all right? And then we subset the sixth. So this is only the, this is the uh, adjusted price, okay? And if you run this, a while ago we had difficulty because I had, uh, I committed a mistake in the subsetting. It took, a, it took us some time, so. Uh, it just tells us that uh, if we're not careful with the placement of the parentheses, then it will generate an error term. And it took me some time to to discover the, with the help of the class, the mistake that I made. All right, so let's run this. I hope this is okay. Yeah, I think this is okay. So it will take a few seconds because there are 10 stocks here. Okay, we're done. Just a few seconds. So this is your portfolio prices. Okay, so there are 10 stocks, all adjusted prices. Microsoft, Apple, Tesla. Okay, so we have 1,762 entries all in all, 10 columns. Okay, let me pause for a while and, uh, and please, may I request you to please chat. In the chat box, if you were able to follow along, if you were able to upload the portfolio prices data, download from Yahoo. Feel free to raise your hands, class, if you have questions. I might be going too fast. Last time we used a different method. 
we use the environment, uh, we created an environment. So at least we're looking at different ways to do this. And if you're done class, kindly chat please, so that I know uh, if I can, if I may continue already. I see three, three hands answering. But let's wait for your classmates. So then, out of 21, so one third, okay, let's give your classmates a few more seconds. I hope you're following the discussion class. I hope you're coding also. Okay, all right, I hope the others are following along. Okay, so uh, we now have the stock prices, right? This one, if we check our portfolio prices, as I showed you a while ago. We can find here, we can see here the adjusted prices from January 4. 2016 until December 30, 2022. 1,762 entries all in all. Okay, good. All right, so this time, uh, towards the end, uh, I hope we're able to reach that point today. We're going to comp we're going to compute for the beta of our portfolio. Okay, as you know, what from what you learned in your prior finance subjects, beta is a met measure of the volatility of your asset. In this case, our portfolio of uh, assets uh, relative to the market. So we're going to use uh, okay, we're going to create a market. Okay, and we're going to use, let's use, uh, we can use GSPC, the Standard & Poor's, or we can use the ETF, the Exchange Traded Fund that tracks Standard & Poor's, which is SPY. So let's use that. Okay, so let's create this benchmark. Uh, benchmark prices. Okay, and we're, we're also going to out minus. Let's use the get symbols again, get symbols, get symbols, and okay, the, uh, the symbol for, uh, the symbol for GSPC for the uh, ETF, the trucks GSPC is SPY, okay, SPY, all right. So let's use, of course, the same date from is equal to um, start to is equal to end. And then same periodicity is equal to daily. Okay. And then auto that assign 
since we're assigning it the name benchmark prices, you can uh, you can create it to false, and then we will also uh, subset the sixth column. So we're going to need the the sixth column, the adjusted the adjusted uh, price of spy. So let's run this, and then we. We need not identify that this is from, of course, we could have used also source is equal to Yahoo because that's the default. And let's check benchmark prices. So this is also from February, uh, January 4, also 1762. Okay, so same time frame, and this is your spike. Okay, by the way, let's check. Uh, usually when we're loading, downloading prices from quant mode, usually wala naman siya, ano, wala siyang no, no missing values, but it's good practice to check for missing values. Control Alt I. Okay, so how do we check for missing values? Plus, what we usually call sums, column sums, right? To recall this column sums, and then what do we check? We check for the portfolio prices, okay, and then we append here. We're go, we're going to add lahat ng okay, lahat ng NA. So here we're saying that column sums add up all the columns of those that are NA in portfolio prices. So we expect to have ten columns here, okay. 10 answers because there are 10 columns. And let's see. Okay, you can see here that all of our columns have, um, have zero and A's. So no missing values, that's good. And then let's also change the name of our portfolio prices. I don't like the name uh, with the adjusted. Let's just, uh, let's just, okay, maybe let's put it here below. The column names. Okay, we can make use of that function. Column names, is it big? Okay. So there's big, small n. Okay, sorry, small n only. Call names, okay. Call names, column names of our object portfolio prices. Okay. Let's change the column names, okay? And then let's change it by the, uh, what do we change it with? We have tickers here, right? So let's change the column names, uh, which includes the that, uh, that adjusted. Let's just make it into just the, just the uh, name of the asset. Tickers, right? So these are just simple, simple functions. So let's run this, okay, and we can now see that our portfolio prices. Uh, we have changed the name of our portfolio prices. Let's also do the same for our benchmark, because our benchmark also contains. Okay, anyway, just it's just a spy, so that's very easy to to change, and let's also check for column sums. Yeah, let's just copy this. Control C, Control D. So just to check, and then we change this by benchmark. Okay, so no missing value. Put here. Okay. 
best to give a description of what you're doing. Okay. This one. Change the column names. Okay. Right, then as I mentioned before, it's always good practice class to, to give the uh, chunk a name, daily prices, etc. I'll, I'll not do that now, but always a good practice to give names to your code chunks. Okay, so where are we now? Let's also change the name of uh, the benchmark prices. We haven't changed it. Okay, spy adjusted. Let's just call it, let me just copy this. Control C. And then I'll just put it here, Control D. So this is benchmark. And then I'm going to call it spy. Okay, and then let's run this. Okay, so now you can now see that the spy, uh, the benchmark price has a column named spy. Okay, so let me pause for a while. And I know I'm going quite fast, so I allow you to allow you to catch up with what I've been writing here. When you're done, class, kindly chat. Thank you, Carlos. Let's wait for the others. Okay, good, thank you. All right, so let's just uh, see what we have created so far. We now have a vector of the stock prices of, uh, of the benchmark, which is SPY. SPY is an ETF exchange traded fund, and it tracks the movement of the uh, S&P 500. So it's a good proxy for the S&P 500, which we, it's, it's oftentimes considered as a market. Why did we do that? Why did we download the SPY uh, exchange traded funds? Because when we compute for the CAPM later, the capital asset pricing model, you know that we have to have the uh, a market, a, the basis, a benchmark, which is usually uh, the, the market. So the market that we're going to use is S&P 500. So we're going to compute for the uh, beta the the uh, how the asset how our portfolio is well re, uh, relate the volatility volatility of the asset 
compared to the market. Okay, so let's now, but before that, let's uh, let's see how our how our uh, portfolio, how how the prices, how the returns of the. Uh, well, let's let's start first with the. Uh, we don't have the returns yet. Let's let's plot the prices. So plot portfolio prices. Okay, and then let's put the legend here. Tickers. So let's run this. So we can see here the ten different uh, ten different stocks. Okay, there, there is commonality here. You can see at this point, uh, that's where the COVID period started. Okay. It seems consistent that all the stocks uh, went down. Okay. This, their prices. Okay. <clears throat> So oh, let me clear that. <clears throat> okay. Now this time, clear <clears throat> or drawings. All right. Okay. Are are we clear so far, class? Okay, thank you. All right, now we can ca calculate for the returns. Okay, we have uh, a portfolio of assets. Okay, these are the 10 stocks. So let's compute for the returns. Uh, it's very easy to compute for returns uh, in R. We can use, uh, there's a packet, there's a function. I think we studied this last time, ROC rate of change. And this comes from the technical trading rules package in R, or we can make use of uh, the calculate calculate returns or returns that calculate. And this comes from the performance, performance analytics package. Okay, let's try both, okay? Let's try both, control out I. All right, so Let's create an object and let's call it uh, portfolio. Okay, maybe let's call it stock returns. Stock returns. Okay, and the stock returns is, let's use the ROC function. But before we do that, let's take a look at what the ROC function gives, gives us. Okay, let's use the... Uh, help function here. Okay, ROC. Okay, here, so it's from the technical trading rules package, okay, which we didn't install, which we didn't load anymore because when we load quant mode, this automatically loads with quant mode. So the ROC, uh, calculates the rate of change of a series over n periods. Okay, so uh, x here pertains to the the asset, the price of the asset. n is equal to 1. This is the period. You can compute for a 30-day period. The, the return between 30 days, the return between 7 days, the return between x number of days. So that's the default is n is equal to 1, which means if the return that will be given us is a day-on-day -day, uh, computation. If you want a, let's say, uh, between 30 days, then you will have to identify here n is equal to 30. And then the type, either continuous or discrete. Okay, the default is, we're told here the default is continuous. So if you want, yeah, if you want, uh, it's okay not to, if you want a continuous returns, uh, no problem with uh, not identifying this. 
But if you want a discrete return or simple returns, then you have to uh, you have to type type is equal to discrete. All right. Okay, so let's uh, use this ROC. Okay, so we're we're asking R to get the uh, rate of change of your of your portfolio portfolio prices. Okay, portfolio prices, and then let's just let's just use type is equal to. So we know that uh, this is uh, the default is continuous. But nevertheless, let's still uh, type that just for uh, explanation purposes and then control enter. So we now have here stock returns and we have this. We have uh, the first row as missing as NA. And we know the reason for that because there is no, there's no prices prior to January 4. Okay, so let's just check how What's the con what's the continuous uh, returns formula? So continuous is also the same as log log returns. Okay, so let's just check if indeed that's the same. Okay, so let me once again go here. Stock returns. This is point zero zero four five, right? Five five. So let's see if we get the same answer. So we said that continuous is just get getting the log, log returns. So the formula for log returns is just the log of the price at time t. So control C, control V, divided by the price at time t minus one. Control C, control V. Okay, so that, that's how you get the continuous return day on day. Or that's the same as log of price at time t minus log price at time t minus one, because that's the that's the definition of logarithm. Okay, log of a over b is simply log of a minus log of b. Okay, so let's perform this 0 0.00455, which is exactly the same as uh, a short stock returns. This one. Okay, had we used? Okay, let's use. A discrete. Let's see if it will be the same. Type is equal to discrete. Okay, so let's run this. All right, you can see that it's different. It's four, five, six. And the discrete returns is obtained by what's the formula for that? It's equal to, uh, let me copy this here. It's the price at time t divided by the price at time t minus one, t, t minus one minus one. So this is your discrete returns. Four, five, six, two, one, one, eight. So that's uh, your stock returns here. Four, five, six, okay. Two, one, one, eight, uh, a bit of, uh, of discrepancy because the prices that I use are not actually the complete prices. Okay, I think, uh, uh, there's more here. Okay, that's why it doesn't really jive with the stock returns 100%. But for for practical intents and purposes, 456203, 456203. Okay, so there's a, a bit of a discrepancy. All right, but that's the discrete returns. Okay, so going back here, let's uh, we're going to use the continuous returns. Okay. And just to prove my point, if I didn't, if we don't put this here, okay, we didn't define the type, we're still going, we're still going to get the 455 there. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions, class? Any questions? Okay, how about the others, please? Okay. All right. So uh, we can 
And we 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 don't want this the first row here because that might create some problems later on so when we compute for some metrics so we're going to delete that there are different ways to do that you can just subset it into negative 1 you can do this negative 1 and then 1 uh, and then m and then leave it blank which means we're going to delete the first row and then include all the columns and by the way let me let me type back continuous okay so we can do this it will give us the same answer if i run this okay the first row was already removed or what we can do is okay, let me run this again so we now have again the missing value and then let me now use na.omit okay uh, actually this is better than a.omit because if you're go just going to subset it what if there are other missing values right in the other rows so you will be missing that so this is the uh, the, the better way to remove any missing value na.omit so let's run this Okay, and then we don't have any more uh, missing values there. Okay, so let's uh, let's also go to let's also create this stock returns. Okay, same thing, but we're going to use the uh, okay. We have two here returns. Here return that calculate. Okay, or calculate returns. So performance analytics says return that calculate. If I look at this one, return that calculate, you have the prices, you define the method also, calculate simple or compound returns from prices. Okay. The default here for return that calculate is discrete. Okay, so you have to be very careful in using any of this. If you uh, you have to check the the uh, function to be to be sure. That's a good practice. So let's just use calculate, calculate returns. Okay. So same thing here, class. Calculate returns. Okay. Then if we check the the default here is, uh, the default here is discrete. So we have to identify here. It does not use type, but rather it uses log. So calculate returns and portfolio. Portfolio prices, okay. then comma method is equal to log, okay, and then we also na dot omit, okay. either this one or this one, the first stock returns or this one, it doesn't matter. It will give us the same answer. So let me run this. You can see that it's still the same 0 0.00455. Okay, and then we also already removed the first column. Okay. All right. So we now have the returns for our stocks. Okay. And let's also get the returns for our benchmark. For our I. Okay, we also need the returns for our benchmark. Benchmark returns. Returns. Out minus, and then let's also let me just copy this. So any any okay, any function you want, you'll get the same answer. Calculate returns of our benchmark prices. Okay, so we're using the returns class and not the prices because uh, when we when we compute for the beta we're actually comparing the returns of the asset relative to the returns of the market. So we don't use the prices, but rather the returns. Okay, so let's take a look at our benchmark returns. Uh, I haven't run this, let me run this. Benchmark returns, control enter. So we now have it here. Okay, and okay, good. No missing value in the first row. Okay, so once again, let me stop and uh, let me request for your feedback.
Okay, so far? Okay, good, thank you. Okay, let's give a few more seconds to the others to give their feedback. Okay, I hope there are no questions. All right, let's uh, let's see the, the performance of our of our asset. We can there are many functions in performance analytics. That's why I like performance analytics because you can uh, you can use so many so many metrics, so many functions. If we take a look at the our asset stock returns. Uh, okay, we can see here that and let's accumulate this first. Okay, so as uh, wait, stock return stone. No? Okay, what we do now is let's let's compute for the portfolio returns. Okay, the stock returns is different from the portfolio returns. These are individual stock returns. If we're going to make use of this as a portfolio, then how do we compute for the portfolio returns? Uh, if you recall the formula that we showed a while ago, a portfolio return, the return of the portfolio, R sub P, is equal to the sum okay, of your weighted returns. Okay? where I ranges from equal to one up to the number of portfolio assets you have in your portfolio. So you just compute, you just multiply the weight of your asset to, to the return. So these are the returns. So we have to know what are the weights of these assets. Okay, so as a start, let's just uh, compute for the returns of a equally weighted asset portfolio. Okay, so let's write this. Uh, return returns of an um, equally equally weighted portfolio. Okay, so let's compute for that. So we know we are guided by the fact that the returns is. Okay, we can copy this if you want. Let me just copy that formula here. Let's use the late back here. Okay, control C. As a, a reminder, okay, ba ito no, the returns ng portfolio. Tanggalin natin yung, okay, pwede natin tanggalin yung text, di ba na? Anyway, so this is the uh, what we need. So we need to have the weight vector. Okay, so let's create a vector and let's call it equal weights. Let's use more letters, equal weights. Okay, equal weights. Okay. So if it's equal weights, what will be the weight of each of your asset class? Okay, we're now computing for the portfolio returns. In, a, in portfolio returns, you have your assets, you have the returns of your assets. So you need to multiply that by the corresponding weights of the assets. So initially, let's just assume that we have an equally weighted portfolio, which means that each one of them have the same weights. So what's the weight of Microsoft, of Apple, etc.? Anyone? What are their weights? Answer, please. Point one, sir. Sorry? Point one po or How 10%. did you get? Yeah, thank you, John. That's correct. How did you get point one? Sir, since we have 10 stocks po, 
So, uh, 100% divided by 10. 100% divided by 10 or 1 divided by 10. Okay. So, let's do that class. But let's, uh, let's code it. Okay. Let's code it because if there are changes in, uh, suppose we'll, we're going to add an asset. So, instead of 10, it will become 11. So, hindi na mag work in 1 over 10. Right? So what we do is we we make it into a formula so that if there's a change in your asset in the number of uh, in where whatever the number of stocks you have in your portfolio, okay, you you won't need to change this this function. For example, you we loaded only five five assets, so we don't need to make this one over five instead of uh, instead of writing one over ten. We will just write a formula. So that formula is we can use repeat. Okay, we can use the rep, rep function, which is repeat, rep. So what do we repeat? One over, so what, that's one over what class? One over what? We don't use one over 10, okay? This is what I said a while ago. This is not a good way to do it, okay? Because if you have a different, uh, if you have a different uh, portfolio now, so you have only seven assets. So we will have to change this. So let's make it generic. And we can make use of the end call. End call counts the number of columns. Number of columns of what? We can make use of the stock returns here. Or the portfolio prices. It doesn't matter. Both of them have 10. 10 columns, right? Stock returns, 10 columns then. So... Uh, we can make use of n columns of stock returns. Okay. So the repeat function will will ask us, will tell us what are you go what are we going to repeat? So this is one divided by in this case one divided by ten, and the next one is how many times? How many times are we going to repeat that? Then we repeat that. Okay. Ten times also. So that's also hand call stock returns. As I mentioned, you could have used portfolio prices or stock returns. It doesn't matter because they will have the same number of columns. Okay. So control enter. Okay, as you can see now, so it's point one, point one, ten, ten times point one. So we now have our weights. Okay. So we now have our weights, then we can now compute for our portfolio returns. So how do we compute for our portfolio returns? So let's create this object portfolio. It will now be returns. Okay. All right. What function that are we going to use? So once again, let's take a look at uh, at functions that that easily allow us to uh, to compute. So that function we can use is return, okay, return dot p, okay, return that portfolio. Okay, so let's uh, see what. Okay, so this is from performance analytics. All right. So return that portfolio tells us that here. You're using a times series of returns. Take note of returns. Okay, it can be regular or irregular time series for each asset. So you need to have the returns for each asset. So we're not using the prices here because this is return that portfolio. Okay, and then calculates the return of a portfolio with the same periodicity of the returns data. So we can actually copy this. Let's copy this. Control C. And then let's uh, maybe let's just create a new control D. Let me delete this. Okay. So our R here, this is our returns vector. So this is our stock returns, right? Uh, by the way, we're going to create this object portfolio returns. So we're using this return that portfolio. Weights is equal to 
Uh, I think the uh, the default is null. The default is equally weighted, but we already identified our weights equal underscore weights. Okay, equal underscore weights. Wealth that index uh, false, which means it, uh, we don't need to put anything there. But let's just delete this, okay? Because these things we don't need. And then geometric is equal to true. Yes, it's okay. Uh, we're we're using continuous or geometric returns. Okay, here there's such a thing as rebalancing. We're we're going to discuss this uh, uh, by by Friday. What rebalancing means? Okay, you can rebalance uh, every year, quarterly, monthly, etc. But we're not going to do that now. Use that now. Okay. So let's just delete this. Okay, let me just delete that. All right, so we're, we're now creating this object portfolio returns and we're using the portfolio that return function. Okay. If you're using this for the first time, sometimes you might want to uh, per performance analytics, you might want to write the namespace from where this is coming from. Okay. Performance analytics return that portfolio. So the object is stock returns. Then uh, we're giving it the uh, let's okay. okay. All right, return that portfolio. The object is stock returns, which is this one. Okay. And then uh, we're going to use equal weights. And then this is geometric. The returns that we're using is geometric. So even if we, we remove this, okay, that will still be the default. And anyway, we use geometric returns. All right, so what will happen now? What will happen is that our stock returns, this will be multiplied with 0.10 each. So for January 5, you will have one, one portfolio return, okay? So that's, that represents the return of the portfolio on January 5. So each of the days here will now become, will only become one column that, that's your portfolio returns. Okay, so let's run this. And check now our portfolio returns here. Portfolio returns. Okay. As you can see, we now have just one column. So this is the sum product of your you know, individual returns for stocks, for your stocks multiplied by the weights. Okay. All right. Any questions so far, class? Any questions? Okay, thank you. Okay, just as uh, an additional, uh, okay, let's, let's just use some of the functions, a few of them. Plot, plot function of performance analytics. And this will I put here curly brackets indicate that this is a uh, this is a package. So for example, you can use chart that okay, you don't know done performance analytics, chart that ACF plus, chart that bar, okay, chart that uh, correlation. And here let's do this chart that cumulative returns, marrying chart that drawdown, okay? Time series chart of, of the drawdowns. Okay. Uh, let's, let's plot the cumulative returns. Okay, so here, uh, again, class, what you can do is you can, uh,
you can use the help function. Then, okay, just like what we did a while ago, control C. Okay, let's do this. All right. So we know that the returns that we're going to uh, plot is our portfolio returns. This So what will happen in cumulative returns is that this is our portfolio returns. So it will add all the returns on a day by day to day basis. So this one is negative and then negative again, negative again. This means that the cumulative returns for the first few days will, will go down. So I can already uh, uh, picture in my mind because it's you, you'll be adding negative four plus negative three. Of course, it's uh, raised to the net. It's in decimal places. And then when you go here, seven and nine, then we'll, we'll, you, we will see that this will go up. Okay. So let's uh, do this here. Okay, wealth index, geometric, okay. All right, let's uh, do away with the others. Len legend that location. Uh, let's see, uh, bottom right. Okay, color set. Okay, anyway, let's not let's not remove the others. Let's see what happens. These are default values. Let's see. Okay. So this one gives us our cumulative returns. As I mentioned a while ago, it will first go down, right? The first few days, it went down. And then here, it went up for some time, okay? So over the years, in 20, you can, know, you can see here that in 2020, the cumulative returns really uh, went down. This was during the COVID uh, pandemic. It would be interesting also to go back in time and see the effect of the global financial crisis, et cetera. You can do that, of course, by setting the time from Say before 2008, and maybe compare if the effect of the global financial crisis, as far as cumulative returns, is is bigger than that of the COVID era. Okay. All right. Any questions so far, class? Then we can let's see. Let's take a look at another chart that, aside from cumulative returns, we also have this one. Okay, if you can, if you can see here, class, madaming charts data, no? My charts, okay, that performance summary. Okay, so let me just uh, use the, uh, okay, yung, okay, I'll leave you guys to try to look at the other parameters there. So let's just use the portfolio returns, chart natin siya, and then it will give us a set of figures. Okay, so you have here the cumulative returns. You have here the daily returns. You can see here the volatility during this COVID period, really very high in volatility. And then you have the drawdown. Okay, so moving on class. Okay, so this time let's uh, take a look at some metrics, okay, which is actually our goal for today to be able to calculate some, calculate metrics. Okay, I will leave you guys to review yung, what you learned in your prior Jensen's Alpha, okay, what you learned in your previous account uh, finance subject, your beta, okay, what else? The, uh, uh, actually, you have cap and beta, no? cap and beta. Cup and beta, and 
uh, you have the cup and beta. And then you, you also have the uh, uh, beta for bullish and beta for bearish. Maybe let's copy that, control C, control D. The beta, when you have bear runs, and the beta when you have bull runs. Okay. All right, then aside from that, what else? Maybe sharp ratio, one of the the most common ones. Also, we have trainer, etc. But let's just focus on this on this first. So let's calculate all of this. We can calculate this easily. Okay. So let's start first with your cap M. For cap M, we would be needing the uh, we would be needing the the risk-free rate. Okay, so let's just assume that the risk-free rate is, let's call it R sub F, and let's just, uh, it ranges, if it varies usually 2%, 3%. Okay, let's just use 3%, okay, or 3.5%. Uh, that's the risk-free rate, average risk-free rate, risk-free rate. But that's annual data, okay? So we have to convert that into uh, into daily data because our returns are daily. So per year, there are 252 trading days, okay? So we can now compute for cap M. Okay, let's, let's take a look at the way to compute for cap M is using the cap M function. Okay, cap M from performance analytics, you have all beta, beta dot bear, beta dot bull. So let's use beta. Okay, and then let's see what this does. So this once again is from performance analytics. So it's a single factor model, cap and beta is the beta of an asset with the variance and covariance of an initial portfolio used to determine diversification potential. Okay, so here the formula cap m dot beta R sub A is, it's a vector, it's an XS, it's a data frame of your asset returns. Okay, R sub B is your benchmark. Okay, so in our case, our R sub A is uh, our portfolio returns, right? This one. Our R sub B, our benchmark is our benchmark returns. R sub F is your risk-free rate in the same period as your returns. So take note. So, uh, ang period kasi natin from 2016 to 2022. So, uh, technically speaking, we should have uh, gotten the average of the risk-free rate during that period. But for our purposes, let's just assume it's it's 3.5%. Uh, uh, All right. So we can now compute for our cap m. Okay, cap m dot beta. Okay, our R sub A here, R sub A is our portfolio returns. Portfolio returns, all right. And then our R sub B is our benchmark, benchmark returns, right. And then our risk-free rate, the default of which is zero, will be your risk-free annual divided by the trade days, okay, because we're using daily. Have I run RF? Okay, I haven't run this. So let me run this first. Okay, so I now have my RF. All right, so this is now our cap M. Okay, so it's 1.16. Okay, which means that our portfolio of 10 stocks is uh, more volatile than the market than than G uh, than SPY. We can also okay, a beta of uh, greater than one indicates that <clears throat> it's more volatile than the market. Let's just copy this. Control C, Control V, and then let's replace. Uh, Top and beta with the okay, beta there. 
So same everything. So during bearish uh, periods, okay, the beta is 1.15. So practically the same as your uh, during regular days or all the days. And the last one is control D. Okay. We replace this by that pool. Okay, I'll leave you guys to to once again review your concepts of the capital asset pricing model beta. But what we learned here is that you can easily compute for this given the returns of your portfolio, given the returns of your benchmark. So very easy to compute for the cap M. Okay, whether it's uh, the regular cap M, the be bearish and the bullish. Okay, 1.07. Okay, so during bullish periods, the our portfolio behaves quite similar to our to our benchmark to our market. It's during it's during both bearish and bullish, which is this one combination of bearish and bullish, and bearish uh, bearish uh, cycles or bearish uh, times that our portfolio behaves. Uh, more volatile than the market. Okay, so <clears throat> aside from cap M, we can also compute for the Janssen's. Okay, so we have now here our Janssen's ratio. Janssen's ratio, if you recall from your uh, finance subject, okay, on the being Janssen's class, it's the excess, diba? Right? Excess, excess ng ng portfolio natin over the market okay, i will i will uh, leave you guys to once again review yung formula nito so it's just cap m also cap m pero alpha na siya yan and if you take a look at this and calculate single factor model okay siguro let's maybe there are okay cap m That alpha. Okay, single factor din siya, just like beta. And difference lang nito, alpha purports to be a measure of manager's skill by measuring the portion of manager's returns that are not attributable to beta. Okay, so for for some, they prefer this Jensen's alpha because it's the it's, it measures the excess returns contributed by the management how how well they're able to manage their funds excess over the beta no? okay so there are examples here okay in managers that's a data set i'll leave you guys to to look at this example my cap and alpha data no? so can you compare the data monthly data to 0 0.035 okay anyway let's not Let's just focus on this one. So cap M alpha, ang, ang syntax din niya, ganun din class. Eh? Syntax is RA, RB, and then RF. All right? So let's just copy this. Control C. Control D. So over this period, has management been able to really create value for the okay, Positive naman, kaso uh, practically, practically negligible. No? So practically zero. So the, the management, uh, the, ma the one managing this portfolio, okay, was uh, just, well, in a sense, it was just mimicking the uh, in excess kasi to of the, no, no, the risk-free rate. Parang minimimimik lang nila yung market eh. Okay, so not so much, uh, not so much, quote unquote, uh, let's say remarkable performance. All right, then lastly, we have yung sharp natin, call out I, okay, which is your the uh, measure of your uh, returns per unit risk. 
So we also have this sharp ratio, which measures the returns per unit risk. So, right? So what's the function for this? You guess it, right? It's sharp ratio. There. Okay, again, NASA <clears throat> performance analytics. Okay, so let's, again, let's take a look at uh, Medyo iba yung ano, no? Medyo iba yung sharp ratio. May mga required na ano siya. Okay. Question mark, sharp. Sharp ratio. All right. So calculate a traditional modified ratio of return over standard deviation. Okay. Standard deviation or var, uh, value at risk or expected shortfall. If the sharp ratio is simply the return per unit amount of risk represented by your variability. In the classic case, the unit of risk is the standard deviation of the returns. Okay, so ang tinatanong sa atin dito, yung returns, yung risk-free, and then yung p-value. Kasi confidence interval yung tinitingnan dito. Eh. Confidence level for calculation. And the default is 0.95. Okay, and then function, pwedeng ST, standard deviation, Pwedeng value at risk, pwedeng expected short form. Okay? So, uh, ang formula niya, ito, di ba? Okay, kinuha niya ba yan, class, yung sharp ratio? I'm sure you discussed that in your other subjects. Did you pakichat paki, paki nga, please, class? Wala, ang sumasagot. Pretty sure na discussion yun sa ano. Sure ka? Car sure ka, Carlos? Hindi na discuss eh. Ibang subject. Uh, yes, sir. I, I haven't taken a lot of financial subjects by the moment. So. Mm. Okay. So yung mga measures na to, si Jensen's alpha, si sharp ratio, yung beta, these are used as... Uh, financial metrics to assess the performance of the asset, of an asset relative to the market. And usually yung market, ang ginagamit na comparator is S&P 500 kasi it represents more than 500 or 500, sometimes 500, sometimes a bit less than 500 shares of stock. So compare natin yung asset natin dun sa mercado. Okay. Okay, so whether we are using Janssen's Alpha or CAPM or... Sharp ratio is a bit different because the sharp, sharp ratio is what's your return per a unit amount of risk. Pero yung Janssen's at saka yung trainer, trainer ratio, pati yung top M, these are metrics that are in general used to determine if our, if, uh, our asset is performing well. Okay, so let's copy this. Yung sharp ratio natin, control C. Then copy natin dito, control D. Alright, our R is the portfolio, portfolio returns natin. Portfolio returns. And then RF natin. So this is, uh, kasi daily tayo, no? so dapat the RF natin divided by trade days. Okay, so that's our risk-free. Daily kasi yung returns natin. So, dapat daily din yung ano. Uh, P natin is 0.95 which is the, ano, the default. So, let's just use this standard deviation sa function na gagamitin. Okay? And the others are, hindi natin kailangan muna. So, let's just delete this. Okay. So this is the function for the sharp ratio. All right. So what is this telling us? Okay. So the the uh, the asset, the portfolio is earning okay two percent 
return per 1% uh, per unit of risk, per 1% per of risk. Okay, so does, does that mean that we're okay? Okay, we can only say this class if we compare it with the uh, relative to the market, we're okay, but we also compare it with the other assets. Because huh? benchmarking, to. so you also compare that with other assets. Okay, and then I think we have uh, time for one more. Uh, so let's summarize class. No? So we have also here table. Okay, ito class. No? Table. So marami tayong sa performance analytics talagang ano, uh, yan, table dot cap M. Table dot correlation depende dun sa table dot downside risk. Okay, table dot drawdowns. Kanina yan, drawdowns natin. Okay, so let's use first yung table that um, annualized returns. Ito gamitin natin. Okay, so uh, in the interest of time class, ito na naman si R, yung portfolio returns natin. Ito na naman si risk-free return. Okay, so sige, let's run this. So first is your portfolio returns. Portfolio returns and then comma. Our RF, RF kailangan to, no? Ito. RF is equal to our risk-free rate divided by our trade base. And then what else? Ano pa? Uh, ay, hindi. Sharp pala ito. Sorry. Ano kanina? Hindi ko na, ano. Table that annualized returns. Oops, table that. Anong nangyari? Hmm, sorry. Table, wala akong question mark. I forgot the question mark there. <clears throat> okay, so ito, no? RF geometric, okay. Digits. Okay, lagyan natin digits. Digits. Um, digits is equal to we're looking for digits okay so let's run this now what will happen here is that it will now convert everything to annualized no? okay so if you take a look at this yung annualized portfolio returns natin is 10% 10.79% Ang standard deviation is uh, 25%. Okay? So that's why ang annualized sharp ratio natin, which is the ratio of the return per standard deviation, so that's 27.28%, uh, around 28%. Okay. So next meeting, class, uh, it's already almost time. Next meeting, ang assignment nyo, is please take a look at this package kasi yan ang focus natin. Medyo mahirap yung ano ha, yung, yung package na to class. Kaya I will be requesting you to please ito yung portfolio analytics. No? Kasi uh, maraming ano to, maraming functionality sa dapat natin gawin. Kukunin natin, define, we will define the asset, we will define the constraint, we will define the objective. So medyo ano siya medyo challenging okay but of course kakayanin natin to uh, tanong ko lang class kasi dito sa dito sa portfolio analytics gagawin natin yung efficient frontier okay may i ask you if you have already done efficient frontier sa excel do you know how to do efficient frontier sa excel kasi i-compare natin magko-compare tayo no? uh, for me i find the efficient frontier plot sa excel Okay naman siya. No? Uh, in fact, mas gusto ko nga yung plot ng efficient frontier sa Excel kaysa dito sa R. Hindi pa kasi masyado yata ano, develop yung ano, yung ano ni R sa plotting ng efficient frontier. Uh, John, no? How about the others class? Okay, no. 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 Okay, no. All right. Sige. So, maybe we'll Maybe let's start first with efficient frontiers Excel. Okay, and then we 
uh, and discuss muna natin yung general framework ng ng portfolio optimization sa portfolio analytics and then we go to excel to to uh, do a uh, uh, portfolio optimization and efficient frontier kasi ko compare natin sa R okay all right sige class thank you so much and uh, uh, i'll see you on thursday friday i mean yung magpapa-check na attendance